sort of in tangent to this, uh, you and I are, you know, the same age. Um, more or so less. That, yeah. More or less. So that means we're at about halftime. In oh, this, man. Don't say it like that. <laughs> listen. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's how I, I feel. It's like, listen, the first half is down, but we have a whole second half. All right. Let's think positive. Yeah. yeah think okay. Positive. And so my, my, my question is, you know, um, you know, halftime, you go into the locker room, you take stock of, of, of what you've done. So that's the question. Halfway through, is life what you thought it would be or what you hoped it would be? Like, what do you, how would you grade this first half? <laughs> Man, you're asking some questions here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've been waiting for this. I, I, I had so much fun in our interview and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to get this cat in my, in my seat, man. I got some questions. All right. Well, okay. I mean, look, I'm an honest dude, man. I I, I can say that I've been a success and a, and a big failure. So, okay. yeah, man. I mean, I, I was able to do professionally what I didn't think I was going to be able to do. I mean, really. I mean, I went from um, uh, drinking 40s on the porch and spitting sunflower seeds off them. Okay. You know, uh, <laughs> you, know you know, that's what you do when you're 17, 18, 19 years old, you know, in yeah. South Carolina. So I went from that to being a tenured professor with a couple of books under my belt and a lot of leisure time. So that's yeah. wonderful. On the other hand, um, I got I got no kids. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I have too many whiskeys. Um, <laughs> I, I don't get to see my family as much as I want. And I haven't built up a lot of friendship networks. And yeah. so I think to myself, you know, maybe professionally, you know, things are cool, but but personally, eh, I don't know. <laughs> so, so, okay, if if you don't mind me asking, socially, what, you know, what is that? Did you want kids? Did you want a family? What do you think was the is the impediment to that? And you still have time, man. Well, I ha I have time. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think I think I think my 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 dogs are still uh, moving well. But but I, but <laughs> but uh, but uh, I, my wife is is running out of time. So ah, I see. yeah. Oh, I forgot that you were married. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, um, it just it just didn't happen. Um, some of it was you know you I went back to to school late after mm -hmm. I was a high school teacher for a while. I went back to school. And so I wasn't prepared. Like I didn't get married until thirty-five. So I got married at thirty-five, and oh, you know man, I was working on my second divorce by the time. That's right. I remember you, you got a, a, um, you know, a lot of experience. I guess. I yeah, remember. man. Yeah. 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 So but no, I got married at thirty-five, and then at thirty-six, that was uh, that was falling apart. But that's an, that's another one year. Okay. Well, but we were know. together. We were together for about three years before then, and so. There, there was a whole thing. All right, I'll tell you about it. You know, <laughs> yeah, tell me what to say. This. I mean, one, oh, go ahead, yeah. You get well, fresh off me a little bit. Okay. Um, so to, to, to ask myself that same question, uh, it's been okay. It, mm -hmm. it was, so it, it's weird because I, I distinctly remember when I was five, um, I told myself, you're going to be okay, Right. Like I didn't know what I wanted to be. I, you know, I, well, I kind of know what I know what I want to be now. But it was like forty when I figured that out. But mm. I, I didn't know what I wanted to be. I didn't know where I wanted to live. But I just knew that I was always going to be all right. I knew that I would never have any serious financial worries, um, and that I would just be okay. And so you you fast forward. I mean, nearly forty years from that moment, and yeah, it's true. Um, I work in Manhattan. I have a great job, you know, as a, you know, data analyst, business process analyst. Um, people pay me for what I think and my opinions and my problem solving skills. And that's wonderful. Um, I didn't want to be divorced. Um, but I ended up getting divorced from my first wife. Um, and my daughter had to, you know, experience that. And, mm -hmm. Um, on one hand, it was sad because, you know, it was at place, this idea of a lifelong marriage sort of on my bucket list. And I failed that. Um, but then at the same time, uh, my ex-wife is a wonderful mother. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I, I know that, you know, karma or whatever you want to call it. I know that the reason why 
I was attracted to her, the thing that I saw in her was that she was what I needed to create this person that needed to be born, which was my daughter. Um, and even despite our issues, uh, we have worked together as partners to raise this wonderful girl. And, you know, my ex-wife, she and I are great friends. Um, we're family, right? And family outside of the fact that, you know, we're no longer sleeping together, um, but we are parents together, um, which is a relationship that's closer than almost any other relationship um, you can you can have with someone. Uh, my daughter's great. I ended up getting married again and that didn't work out. But yeah, my second wife, she and I are awesome friends. Um, <laughs> well, how does that work? Come on now. Usually those things work? don't end so well, you know? How does that work? Um, <laughs> I'm not friends with any of my ex. Uh, <laughs> so, here, so, okay. Okay. So this is, this interview has gone like sideways. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how it works. It works because I'm naive to the fact that you're supposed to be upset at each other. Okay. I don't really recognize that as a thing. Uh, both of my, my parents, you know, who, who were divorced when I was around like four or so, um, they were always cool with each other. I mean, I knew they had their disagreements and there were some fights, but for the most part, they were always cool with each other. Uh, my mother will talk to my father, you know, or they'll talk to each other like now, or my father is, you know, very close or, or thought very fondly of uh, my mother's family. And um, when my father goes to Florida, he'll stay at my mother's house. Um, they've always been very friendly that way. Mm -hmm. And even when my mother, um, divorced my stepfather or he divorced her um you know they had a falling out and whatever but she was always still very cool with him which was sort of to my consternation because i hated the guy but <laughs> my parents have always demonstrated um just this i don't even know what to call it but they never let breakups and all these things sort of uh, uh get in the way of their relationship with the individual. And so as I grew up, I always just thought that that's what you were supposed to do. Like if you broke up with someone, um, you broke up and it wasn't necessarily anyone's fault just so much as that it didn't work out. But if you really loved and cared about them, you're always supposed to love and care about them. Um, and that's how I always approached it. And for the most part, um, most ex-girlfriends, it was maybe a little weird to them that I would still call them or still like say, Hey, let's go hang out. I never try to sleep with them. I never try to do anything. It's like, yeah, man, you're, you're still my friend. I still love you. Um, and that's just how it is. I know when my, when I got divorced from my first wife, uh, she was obviously very upset and, and somewhat, you know, scared about the whole thing because she had a kid and, you know, I'm sure in her mind, she was thinking the worst, Oh my God, is this guy going to abandon me and leave me, uh, you know, to, to fend for myself. And I told her, I'm like, no, you know, like all the responsibilities and, and everything that I said that I would do for you in terms of being your partner and being a father to, you know, your child, all of that stuff is still on the table. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to sleep with you anymore. You know, I don't want that responsibility. Man, you know, look, and, look. And, and it wasn't, and it wasn't <laughs> just, I'm being a little facetious with that. It wasn't just about the sex, but that's kind of what, you know, really. No, I, I, I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that, you know, that's a very, that, that's a mature way of doing things. Listen, I, I that's think. what I thought. She was not having any of that. She's from the <laughs> South, you know? <laughs> and so she told me in her Southern accent exactly how this was going to go. And, you know, we had our years, but. I stayed true to it because my love and respect for her hadn't changed. I just knew that we weren't good together. Um, and, you know, that's what, you know, that's just how, how it was. And it's been what nearly, oh my goodness, 13, 14 years now. And so we're just great now. And even with my, my second wife, it was just one of those things of where we just decided she was on a path and I was on another path. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know what? Let's not ruin our relationship by being together. So, you know, we just dissolved that contract, but we may, we, we were able to, um, one of my best friends, he actually said this, uh, just yesterday. And in, in fact, uh, when you get divorced, you don't have to deal with any of the crap that you don't care about 
you know, that you don't like about someone. You only, you get to focus on that one thing, that one or two things that you really love about them. And that is sort of, Mm. that's the space that they, that they hold in your life. You know, it's like going to your favorite restaurant, you know, this favorite restaurant, they have the best, you know, pancakes, you know, ever. You love the pancakes here. That's the only thing that you, whenever you want pancakes, you go to this specific restaurant and relationships are like that. This person, you know, speaks or understands a particular fear or concern or aspiration that you have. So you go to that person for that particular understanding. Um, And it's almost like how I am on Twitter. It's like, you know, disagreements have nothing to do with how I feel about you as an individual. Um, And I don't know, here I am 44. I'm great friends with both my ex-wives and (laughs) that's where we are. Look, let me tell you, I, so I, um, I'm in pretty good shape. I could be better, uh, but I'm in pretty good shape for a guy my age. But but I was in the best shape of my life when I was 34 years old, and I'm going to tell you why. So at this point, I was um, uh, 33, I think. I was uh, finishing up uh, my graduate work. I was living in an apartment in Harlem with um, Stephanie Jean Jean. So if you're out there, Stephanie, if you happen to hear this... <laughs> And, and she was a uh, um, like the stereotype of a of a French woman, and I think I dated her because I thought like I was like okay, I'm a, I'm trying to be intellectual, and and you know here's this this woman who 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 smoked cigarettes, and I don't smoke at all. I didn't actually like yeah. it. Um, who smoked cigarettes? She wears the black turtlenecks. You know, she's got that French accent. So she's studying art history, and we yeah. go to like these. Um, art uh, openings and stuff, and I just felt like the, the the cool guy. But but we weren't really supposed to be together. I I, I, I should yeah. have known that earlier. So anyway, um, I decided I'm out. Now we were living together, mm-hmm. so I, I kind of just let it slip. I'm that um, you know I am leaving, and I have put a down uh, payment on a on an apartment. I didn't tell. Him. So I I was just going to try and leave when the time came and she found (laughs) out and I had like three weeks to go. So I couldn't stay in that place. Yeah. So I had a a membership at the New York sports club. So I would just stay there all day. Like I would go to, (laughs) I would, I would go to teach or whatever I was doing at the time. I can't remember what it was. And then I would come home, take a shower or eat something. And then I would go to New York sports club. They had the, you know, you got the TVs on the elliptical. So I would just sit on those. I would just get on that for an hour. or So watch a football game. Take a right. break, then do something else for another hour until I just couldn't take it anymore. And then I would go home. I mean, I think I lost like 15 or 20 pounds. I was ripped, man. I, I, wait. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why didn't you why didn't you just stay home? Why didn't you just go home? Because it was so uncomfortable. See, like, I'm like I, I I should and I was wrong. I should have I should have talked about it and, and told her, you know, like this isn't working. But I just wanted to avoid the conflict. See. <laughs> so and see, and that's one thing. I don't avoid conflict. Uh-huh. I well let, let, let me fra- let me rephrase that. When I don't want to deal with something and I, I I know that it's gonna be bad and and I don't have the bandwidth to really keep it on the rails. I just won't deal with it. I'm like, mm. listen, we have to put a pin in this. We'll talk about it in a day, two days when we can better handle it. But I can just sit in that discomfort. So I'm never not sleeping in my bed. You know, I, <laughs> Jen and I, we were watching something or talking about something and someone was saying, uh, you know, that old proverbial uh, husband goes and, and sleeps on the couch. Yeah, yeah. And she just kind of chuckled and I just laughed because I'm like, I'm never not sleeping in my bed. You know, if we're if if we upset, listen, you can stay on your half of the bed. I'm going to stay on my half of, the, half of the bed. Or if you are that uncomfortable, you can always leave, but I'm never leaving my bed. Uh-huh. Um, it's, it's, just, it's just one of those things. It's like, you know, we don't have to get along. But there are, it's weird. I'm just very compartmentalized like that of where we can have this, this, this knot of anxiety and tension in this one space, but everywhere else, I'm still going to cook dinner for you. I'm still going to, you know, take care of all the things I said I'm going to take care of. You're going to sleep on your side of the bed. I'm going to sleep on my side of the bed. You know, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, But I've, I've heard from several, uh, several corners that I'm a weirdo that way. So yeah, usually uh, the guy. Now, what does this have to do with uh, critical race theory again, dude? I don't know, man. We we just <laughs> because I asked you, I asked you how did you how did you rate 
you know, the first My, half. Oh, of the yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, but that's, that's, you know, this is a conversation. And so, I'm, I'm, you know, it's just moving to where, to where it moves. Um, but 